excited. Now, no, the set's not ready, so don't y'all get to thinking, oh, is that what she was doing? No, 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 no. Miss Evelyn is going to come and help me, and we're going to design some a country look. We want it to be home is where our story begins. Paul Kiker, home is where our story begins. That is true. What you take away from your home and what you go out into the world is then your responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I want the set to be warmer and not so stark and dark and it's been driving me crazy. So I'm over the driving me crazy and I have my green walls <laughs> back and thank you Lord I'm so excited I could just shout but we've got to move them back a little bit because the lighting isn't quite correct so we will do that in a couple of days. We're going to get it all corrected, and by the next time Money Man comes here to talk, it will <laughs> It'll look all right. be set it up. It will be, be right. perfect. But I just want him green because you're the Money Man. So. Well, you know, it's funny because I struggle with colors that are close. And like if it's obvious green, yes. then to me, but I see the green now, but at first it looked beige, beige to me. Beige, <laughs> yes, yeah. Me and, me and beige have gotten along because I happen to do, I've done. There's a color called Thunder Bay, and it's uh -huh. a Ralph Lauren color, and I've used it for many, many years, and it is a beige with a hint of ginger in it, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit, little color, but anyway, I'm the green girl, and everybody knows, I got green eyes, see, I got green eyes. You do so have green eyes, pretty green eyes. I do have green, green eyes. eyes. So I got my green eyes going on, and I got my green ring going on, and so I'm just <laughs> excited, I'm so excited. And I wore, I wore color today, y'all. I want y'all to just notice, I am not back in black today. I have on color, and I even have a coffee cup to match it. So. With pearl. Oh, is that not that pretty cool? That just jumped out. Yeah, is that not pretty cool? And I have to share something with y'all. You can't see it, but on the floor, I have a precious dear family that I adore, the Harris family from Ball Ground, Georgia. And many, many, many years ago, I used to make cakes for their dad who ran the wood lumber business in Ball Ground. And I would always go there to get pieces of wood for my wood heater. And he would say, I'd say, well, Mr. Harris, how much do I owe you? No, 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 you don't know nothing. You don't owe me anything the kindest man so then I would make him an apple cake and take to him and I'd say okay mm. and so I always knew what a kind wonderful man he was well in the past few years I got to know his the rest of his family his children and I was lucky enough to sell their home well in their home of many many years was this beautiful rug this rug is really why I'm back on this green set I wanted to use Miss Betty Jo Harris's rug. I got a rug now. I got a rug. I got my painting that my dear friend Ann gave me. I like that. I've painting. got all these things that we're going to hang on these walls once we get these walls going. So I am super excited. I love this color green. And for my dear friend Lisa Perry, who is up in Turtletown watching today, and she said, I knew you'd go with green. Of course you knew I'd go with green. I love green. It's warm, it's friendly, it's welcoming, mm -hmm. it doesn't scare you, it's not bright and bold, it's just warm. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, when I designed this set many, many years ago, I said, I want people to feel comfortable like they're at home, right. you know? So this is the color my kitchen is at home, this is the color the dining room is at home. So just pretend you're in my dining room and in my kitchen and I'll bring you something to eat next time. <laughs> so, so anyway, there's the story and I know everybody's going, well, that's not fixed yet. Well, no, it's not, but we're getting there. So just give us some time. Evelyn did the show with me Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Monday, and then we painted after the show. So oh, we that's painted great. this whole thing after this show. So so we are doing our part. Y'all did a good job. And we're going to get it right. We almost ran out of paint, and we have a few <laughs> spots that we just barely missed because we almost ran out of paint. We had one gallon, and it went. It went a long way. It went very quickly. <laughs> so, it did go very quickly. And quick. we were like spreading it and trying to, oh, please don't run out of paint. We didn't want to buy another gallon for just a little tiny bit. But anyway, thank you to Evelyn. Um, I'm excited. I love, I love green. I like the color green. And I guess it's because my mama would tell you I like to shop. <laughs> and you can't shop without money. No, and I, I no. got to do a shout out to Belks and Canton yesterday. Everybody who's been around me, as a realtor, I do a lot of walking every day, and I've had a problem with my foot for over two months, and I've really been, it's been tough, and it's been very, very painful, but I walked in Belks yesterday in Canton, and they had these amazing shoes on sale. 
way on sale, big on sale, and I got them, and they have this cushioning. And today, I'm walking much less painful, and it's so nice because for the past two months, I mean, you could see it in my eyes. The pain was real, mm. and the pain was there. And today, I still have some pain, but these shoes are helping. So I'm going back and see if they, this was the last pair they had. And thank goodness it was my size, so it was meant to be. <laughs> but um, when you hurt, it's not fun. No, you know, it's no. not fun. And I've been Makes in so it hard much to pain. And and I've been like, me and Advil have become best friends, which is not good for your stomach, you know. Right. So you do all these stupid things. But but anyway, so to um, Kevin Roper's mom actually works at Belks and Canton now. I and, didn't know uh, that. She got me these shoes, and they were the last pair in my <laughs> size, and I'm excited because they were dirt cheap. <laughs> so dirt cheap is also the thing I like. It. And what does that sign behind me say about dirt roads? So sometimes all you need is freedom, an old truck, and a dirt road. That's right. Would you live that life and be happy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I said, I think that's, I love Gilmer County. I love I these too. back roads. I love Boardtown. I love Cassius Valley. I love these back roads of, of Gilmer County. It's just a really cool place to go. Now get me in Fannin County on some of the dirt roads and I might get lost right. because I don't know my way around as much up there as I do down here. But I have this thing when I go through Gilmer County, all of a sudden I'll recognize something. You know, Fannin County, not so much. Sometimes I stay lost yeah. for a while. So, but a lot of beautiful things to see. Have you ever been to Turtletown, Tennessee? I have. See, have you ever walked that hiking? I know you're a hiker. No, I have not walked that. You should do it. Lori Tipton did beautiful photography there and shared it. And um, absolutely gorgeous walk with waterfalls and just beautiful, mm. beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah, Turtletown's a neat area. It's a neat area. And I have to invite you and your sweet Holly to come to Ball Ground and walk the 50-acre walking trail. And you can okay. go to, Evelyn just set up a new site She's from Peru and she just moved to Ball Ground and she is totally in love with Ball Ground. <laughs> so she just started a new site and I shared some pictures of the 50 acre walking trail with her and you walk down to where the power dam used to be and there's a beautiful creek there and it's just mm -hmm. a beautiful setting and it's walking distance to town. Mm, that's so that's nice. pretty awesome. That's that pretty is awesome. Nice. So y'all gotta come one day, come and have Love lunch to do that. and then go walk off your lunch by walking mm -hmm. down to the walking trail. So so, when's the last time you were in Ball Ground? Uh, like sitting around downtown, maybe three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And what did you see that was different and unusual? Everything. <laughs> I was in and it's out pretty so quickly, so I didn't really crowded, observe. Yeah. It's just so crowded. It's hard to, you know, used to you could go down there and, uh, you know, I could sneak down, have lunch, and come back. Can't do that anymore. No. Because I'm, I'm still old school, like, my lunch is an hour. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, so yeah. in and out. And yeah. If I can't well, do that, I get stressed. We are very thankful. If you look at the beginning of the street, like where Jill's Bakery is, up to the top of the hill where Laura Mays is, all of the people who have decided to run a business there, they ain't from around here. Mm. They are people who chose Ball Ground right. as their destination to make a living. Mm -hmm. And so I tell everybody, please shop, please mm -hmm. eat with our local folks because they're local now. Yeah. They're from New York, Connecticut, um, Louisiana, you name it. I mean, Germany. We, we got people from everywhere who chose Ball Ground mm -hmm. to open those businesses. And from Jill's Bakery, I think she's from Alpharetta, so she's kind of my granny say, well, she and I are kind, but she's from close by. So, <laughs> you know, she's a city That's slicker. But, but she has a fantastic business on this yep. end of town, then Laura Mays up here on this end of town, from Connecticut, from mm -hmm. New England, you know. And it's just working. Right. But in order for it to continue to work, as right. the winter months come upon us, Local people have to eat there, shop there, and mm -hmm. support these businesses. So I mm -hmm. hope that's going to happen. Yeah. I hope that people get involved in it. And you know yourself, um, it's all about that repetitive. You can't just eat there once a month. You got to no, eat there. You got to continue to eat there. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's part of. Um, you just got to support the local businesses. I know the yeah, fast food's convenient, and we're all busy, but. But we could all use a little bit of slowing down and get in there and listen. You too. just said the word fast food, and I have to get tickled because I have been reading. You know, I read everything, and 
people were talking about how long they were sitting in fast food lines because mm -hmm. the fast food restaurants at $12 an hour cannot hire enough people mm -hmm. and they are struggling to wait on people. They can't find any help. That is so sad and they can't find help because because the government's paying everybody to stay at home. Exactly. Well, it's not only that, too. So I've been uh, talking with some guys in the timber business. They're cutting some timber for some people I know. I was out there talking with them. You can't find truckers right now, either. I know. Like they're, oh, I know. they're having Thank to go you, buy Jesus. their own trucks. That is not a part of my future or, yeah. or my today. Thank you, because you talk about tough. Yeah, I mean, it's it's everywhere. That's one of the things in 22 years of working with people in businesses and, and dealing with Wall Street and, you know, economics and all of that, I have never heard. And, and it's not just one industry. It's everywhere across mm -hmm. the board that you have these shortages. Mm -hmm. Shortages of employment. It's crazy. And um, It's crazy. And you used to, you would get the Atlanta paper and there would be, like, there might be a hundred jobs advertised in the paper, but there would be 5,000 people right. looking for a job. Right. And now it's exactly the opposite. Every single business has a sign out from the chicken plant to the Dairy right. Queen to all the plumbers. Everybody is hiring. Right. They can't find anybody to hire. No, they can't. The problem is, you know, it's like the, the, the politicians, oh, let's go to $15 an hour wages. Well, I mean, that's great and it sounds I good. I don't want to pay $9 for a quarter pounder at the, at the burger joint. Well, I that's just don't want to. That's yeah. coming anyway. But. Um, you, you know, the point is, is, you know, you've got all the government programs and assistance that's there. And we went from trying to help people that really needed help to let's buy some boats. I mean, you know, I'm sorry, but the reality is that's what it is. So, you know, if, you know, I've talked to employers that have said, well, you know, you lose employees, like, well, I don't want a pay raise. Well, well, why not? Because you, you can give somebody a $5,000 pay raise, all of a sudden now they don't qualify for assistance. Yeah. They lose food stamps, they and lose all of, this, all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, just, you know, free markets work best. Free markets work best and it takes courage. I think the reason that people don't want freedom anymore is because they don't have the courage to, to live. We are not a courageous society anymore. And what I mean by that is if you have freedom of speech, yeah, people are going to say things that are going to hurt your feelings. But let the market ignore them. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do business with somebody who acts like an idiot with their tongue. Um, but, you know, the government gets involved and says, I'm going to fix this. Anytime you try to push down on something, it causes inefficiency somewhere else. And then they have to control everything, which is what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And how many of you have experienced or lived with a control freak in your life? Is it fun? <laughs> no. Then why do we want to live with a government that has to control everything for us? Yeah. It, it just, yeah. you know, and, and, it, and it fosters a society of people that want to tell other people what to do. It's just, it's not right. It's not right. Well, I, I just, lately, I just have to stay completely out of the political mess because I just, I can't do it. And, and you would die laughing, but <laughs> I got kicked off Facebook for using the word chigger because I'd been to Alabama and I had tons of chigger bites on me. Hey. And I, I compared the Alabama chiggers to the Georgia chiggers and it took me like five to seven days to get rid of these chiggers. And I painted those suckers with fingernail polish. I mean, I did everything. I stomped them, I picked them, I, you know, I did everything. I've got 35 <laughs> between both of my legs right now. See? And they're in places that I should not talk yes, about yes, in public. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I literally, I was at the lake and I wasn't out there that long, but I brought home some Alabama chickens. Those things are horrible. Oh my gosh, they ate me alive. And I thought, oh yeah. And I remember the first time I came to the country and I mean, <laughs> think about it, I was, I grew up in the city, really city, 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 like Morningside. Why does that not surprise me? Yeah, I was a city slicker. <laughs> I knew it. And, and it was so weird because I can remember going to my Aunt Bessie's house and she had just gathered these beautiful tomatoes. And I sat down on the porch and I just picked up a tomato and I took a bite of it. Well, number one, I'm allergic to um, the acid in them and it breaks me out. Oh no. And number two, she said, we hadn't washed them yet and they've got 
points seven and dust on them. They got seven dust. Oh gosh, you know. So I learned some lessons, but the next thing I learned was I went blackberry picking. Oh yeah. And that's where I learned about a chigger. Yeah. And I. And they love pine trees, pine straw. Well, they love little fat girls yeah. too. So <laughs> they love me. But but it's so weird because I didn't know about all that stuff, you yeah. know. And then I watched these grandmothers who said, "Well, you tie some turpentine around your ankles, and it'll keep them away." And I said, "You do what?" And they said, yeah, you just uh, draw a rag up in turpentine or put a brown paper sack, soak it in turpentine, soak it in turpentine, put it on your legs, inside your pants, and I'm going, are you kidding me? So so when the word Alabama chiggers versus Georgia chiggers came about and, and it kicked me I guess me Facebook, Facebook assumed it was something bad. I was like, what are y'all talking about? Yeah. But I can remember as a city kid coming up here, and hearing these slang sayings that are still part of the South. Red bugs, chiggers. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like this sign behind me, dirt roads. I became a dirt road addict. I love to go out on those backwoods. I love to see those creeks. I love to ford mm -hmm. a creek. You know, that's my cool thing. I drive a Lincoln Town car and I'll ford a creek with the best of them <laughs> in my town car. I just like that kind of living. Yeah. So I love it. I love when people farmed. I loved when I had time to have a garden. But today, we're so busy, we don't do the things that were fun anymore, you know? No, no, we don't. We kind of, we got too much going on. Oh, I know that bracelet catch on this. But we, we got too much going on, and we don't take time. But I understand you're going to be taking some time because you're changing your lifestyle a little bit. You gonna be farming a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> How are you gonna be farming? How are you gonna do that in your spare time, young man? I don't ever slow down. I know you don't. But you know, so so our venture is gonna be, which they're cutting the timber out right now, is to start planting trees. Is timber fruit up trees. or down? Uh, timber's down. It's, this is a horrible Explain time. Explain that to me. When the price of wood is so high, why is timber down? <sighs> Bottlenecks, there's not a lot of it. bottlenecks and control. I mean, there's not there's not that many you know uh, sawmills left anymore. So the sawmills pretty much control within a certain area. I mean, there's not price fixing. I don't believe, but mm -hmm. they don't they don't have to pay anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, once you get to the final product, there's a space in there. So it, you know, it really doesn't make sense to me. But I do know this. You know, one of the guys in timber made the comment. He said, look. You know, the, the sawmills are saying, get us more timber, get us more timber to all the, the forestry guys. Well, the forestry guys are, are like, look, you're going to have to pay us more because, because we don't have drivers. We're going to have to start buying our own trucks mm -hmm. and bringing people in. So, you know, and they're like, okay, well, we might think about that. But mm -hmm. see, the problem that we run into in society today, and this is what happens, this is what happens when we become a self-centered, narcissistic society. Okay. Which we became about 24 years ago. You know, we did, and <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, you know, we went from the greatest generation to, you know, I, I don't, in my place, and I know I can get a lot of trouble with this, there's a lot of good baby boomers, but I believe the baby boomers have allowed the failure of our nation to begin on their watch because they were told how great they are and they've lived their lives for themselves and for money and mm -hmm. for greed. Mm -hmm. And uh, not all of them, okay, there are good baby boomers out there. But when you look at it, the baby boomers have had control for some time. Mm -hmm. And they've been deceived. But, you know, people aren't generous and anymore. And they fell for some stuff. Well, they did, but what do we worship? We worship people for the money that they make and the mm -hmm. popularity they have, mm -hmm. not for how good they are. I mean, if people really stopped turning off their TV and paying attention to these Grammy Awards for people that, that are just, just live like hell mm -hmm. and quit, you know, spend a little more time focusing on each other. I don't even watch the Country Music Awards anymore. No. Because I, it's not country music anymore. Well, I'll never watch pro sports again. No, ever. no, me neither. And, uh, and it doesn't mean that everybody in pro I'll, sports I is bad. I still like NASCAR, but I'm so angry at NASCAR for some of the stupidity. But because we have Chandler Smith, who's a local kid, and I love right. watching him, I still like the boat racing because we have Tyler Spear, who's a local guy, and he's number one in the nation. He's on top of his game. So I watch those people I like and those people I enjoy. But the, the big sports 
No. Right. Mm -mm. So, you know, it's like this competition. Everybody's got to make as much money as they possibly can, and they squeeze everybody through that process. So, you know, and then you got government regulation coming in. I know for me, my cost of doing business has raised dramatically in the past mm -hmm. six years because of government regulation. Mm -hmm. More paperwork, more paperwork, more checks and balances, more potential risks that you got to face, more insurance you got to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the system's to the point where, yeah, it may be running, but it's wobbling, it's not sustainable, and at some point the people are going to rebel or they're going to force to be out of it. And I think we're closer to that than what most people realize. Wow. So, you know, the markets are not free anymore. Have I you mean, ever been to Venezuela? Uh, no, I have not. I, I have an aunt who used to go there and, and talked about what a beautiful country mm -hmm. it was. Look what happened to that country. Well, what, what happened to them? You know, it's they've horrible. had severe inflations it's and horrible. It's they horrible. can't manage money. I would actually be interested in buying property in Venezuela right yeah. now, though, if I yeah. was if I was inclined to go buy international because you, Venezuela's reached the point now that it can't get much worse. Mm -hmm. At some point... Literally no food, no utilities, no... You yeah, know, at some point... The loss of life because of that, too. Yeah, I think I gave that quote before, good, good men lead to good times. Mm -hmm. Good times lead to weak men and weak men lead to hard times. Mm -hmm. So out of that hard times, good men are made, and I'm not being you know, chauvinistic in that statement, it's just easier as good men mm -hmm. and women, it mm -hmm. takes men and women to come out the other side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, prosperity does a lot of damage. I mean, it does, I mean, what happens? We, we, you know, we excel when we're hungry to learn. We excel when we're hungry to succeed. The problem is with, with with biblical values, godly values leaving our country, people want to excel with no boundaries on how they're going to excel. They will burn as many people as they can burn to get there. They will lie to as many people as they can lie to get there. Mm -hmm. And there's no responsibility of loving your neighbor because you can have mutually beneficial business. It's okay to get out there and make money and be good at what you do, mm -hmm. but it's not okay to take advantage of other people. And, uh, and we, don't, we, we don't give enough consequences on the personal level to the people who take advantage. You know, it's like nice people are like, well, I mean, I had a situation here recently where I think a real estate agent should lose their license. Wow. And the, uh, I, I really do. They have no business in real estate um, because of deceitful practices. But the person is not going to uh, pursue it to the board because they're, they're just kind. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, but you have a responsibility to stand up for what's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing. We're standing up for the things, you know, some people are standing up for everything to cause problems. Mm -hmm. And then you got people that are, are being, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But we do have a responsibility in society to say this is the boundary. And if you cross it, there should be consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so weird that you said that because I have a friend who was trying to do something and and we use the GAR forms, which is the um, Georgia Association of Realtors. And um, somebody, a seller, wouldn't sign a GAR form because he just wanted a simple contract. And we said, but these are the forms we use daily. These are our guidelines. These are what we use. They said, you know, this is how we do it. And he refused to sign it because it's a legal and binding contract. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's and if we put up $5,000 earnest money, we want a legal and binding contract. So Absolutely. Some people don't understand the process, but the process is we have legal responsibilities right. and we have to do things right, <laughs> you know, regardless yeah. if it's me buying a house or me selling my friend Paula a house or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do things correctly. And, um, you know, we walked away from a deal that we really wanted because he just wouldn't sign that form and we're like, okay. We'll take this money and do something else with it. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, and, and, and I understand why people want to rebel from, from that standpoint because, you know, I, I don't like using contracts. I don't ha like having to use attorneys to draw up things. But I realized That's like many it. years ago, my handshake and my word may matter. But there's many people, oh, yes. there's many people that will look you in the eye and tell you yes. that, oh yeah, I will do yeah. it, and they'll never do it. Yeah, have had some lessons lately. Yeah. And and we all just say, okay, we learned from that, and uh, I understand now, and yeah. can you move on? So. But it's heartbreaking, and you know, and and when the government's printing like this, people get to the point, it's like, well, why not just work the system? And uh, but, you know, there's there's so many things I wish we could have national debates that that you know discussion about whether 
you know, what's the best way to go? We, we, we really have in many areas a bottleneck where one or two people are making decisions for 300 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to represent the people, but they're not supposed to dictate to the people. And unfortunately... Speaking of dictating, <clears throat> have you told your employees you must wear a mask? No, again? I will not. No, no. When we walked in, when I walked into Belks yesterday, and I felt so bad for the employees because they were mandated now to wear a mask by the company. And I said, well, if I have to wear a mask to shop here, I'm going to have to leave because I can't breathe. I mm -hmm. can't breathe with that thing on. So, um, but um, there are new cases of COVID coming out, but I was reading something that 50% of the people in the hospitals had the shot, which scared me because I've had a flu shot in the past and still got the flu. So I guess it equates to the same thing. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But, but when I saw that 50% of the people in the hospital with COVID had the COVID shot, I thought, well, it makes sense because I had the flu shot several years and I still got the flu. So, yeah. so I don't know how that works. But um, are you seeing your clients become, you have a lot of elderly clients, don't you? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm a little biased when it comes to the vaccine right now because we have a family experience that's been quite frankly tragic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Holly's dad, uh, four weeks ago, took our boys offshore fishing and uh, maybe five weeks ago now because time goes by and then, uh, you know, a week after that, couldn't drive a car, could barely feed himself. Um, like at this point, the doctors are saying his life has changed forever. And uh, well, you, you know, have? so so here's what they've narrowed it down to. He's had some neurological symptoms, which they tell neurological problems, which they will tell you when you look at the side effects and mm -hmm. you look at the evidence of the side effects. There have been neurological side effects. Mm -hmm. So he ended up spending 10 days in the hospital. Um, they did the plasma treatment and that seemed to work. But at first they thought that he had you know, non-typical MS developed because he had lesions all over his brain. Mm -hmm. And then they treated it for MS and that didn't work. And um, so, you know, they met with the neurologist about a week and a half ago and he said, look, I have, uh, now this is from Holly's sister to Holly to me, because Holly's sister's a nurse, so mm -hmm. she's been dealing with it. Holly was down there helping, helping care for them. Her mom happened to have knee replacement the same oh day he went. Gosh the day before or day after he went in the hospital. So it was like they were helping take care mm -hmm. of. But Doc says we're officially writing it up as a reaction to the COVID shot because mm -hmm. he had seven other patients present the same symptoms. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know three people who've had pretty severe reactions yeah. to I it. I know somebody who had a massive heart attack right after it. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and, and I have such allergies. I'm allergic right. to everything. And it clearly says that you may have an allergic reaction. I don't want to do that. And so right. when I've had these headaches that I had to have the MRI for, from, um, I was terrified because right. my mother had head in her cancer in her head. My daddy had brain cancer. So you're like, if your head is extremely damaged and hurting, you figure you got cancer. Right. I was terrified. But when they came back and said, no, your blood pressure has been extremely high, so please try to control that. Right. And I can bet your sweet tail I am trying to control it. Even when I get mad, I'm getting mad nicer. Yeah. I'm just not letting it get to me because, but I was scared because I thought something's messing with my brain. Did you have the vaccine? No. Okay. Oh, no. I no. couldn't remember what no, you No, but it's COVID long, long effects from long the COVID. Long effects. Yeah. They see, Holly, I have long haul. Long haul. So yeah. Holly's a long hauler on COVID because she yeah. doesn't have her smell or taste yeah. back. Well, I, I met with two people last night, same yeah. thing. They over nine months yeah and they still have no taste or no smell yeah. so it's so, very weird it's very so weird the thing that bothers me the most and this is what makes me so angry about that it that gnat's gonna stop i know it keeps today. flying around so what makes me so angry about get it some spray. <laughs> is you know trump and look i, I, I he wanted I, the vaccine yeah. well he wanted the vaccine but see he was the one that pushed through the the regulation that keeps us from having the ability to sue the manufacturers of. So the thing is, when you look at the trillion, billions, hundreds of billions of dollars that's gonna be made for these companies, you know, the question is, do they know? 
like, do you keep pushing this through? And how does the administration do this? I mean, and who knows what to believe? That's the problem, right? We don't. I mean, you hear, you hear items, you, you can listen to one conversation that will absolutely terrify you that if I don't have the vaccine, then I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then you listen to information that's like, one study had 74% of the patients that have got the new uh, uh, Delta variant had, uh, uh, had the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in one study, 118 people, I think, died uh, that were not vaccinated and 74 died that were vaccinated. And I, I can't, I don't have the statistics. Y'all know, I'm, most time, we have no clue what we're going to talk no, about when we get here. No, and at first, they said two children wouldn't get it. I know children who've had it. You know children who've yeah, had well, it. Yeah, well, my kids had, had, yeah, had yeah, the original they, virus, yeah, whichever one that was. They said the children weren't going to have it. And yesterday, somebody in our office his daughter-in-law has it now. Well, right. she has two small children, so how do you address that? If you have it and you have two small children, do you quarantine from your children? Right. Even though they told us that children won't get it and we're seeing two and five-year-old children die from it. So right. how do we deal with this? Well, and, still... you know, and, and, the, and that's what I come down to is, is have we been educated enough in the country <laughs> to, to, to do what we're told, but not enough to think for ourselves? That, that's what I wonder, because I'm just a critical and thinker. And I'm still I, thinking for myself. I'm thinking this is how I want to deal with it, and I'm doing it my way. Right, so, so. The, the, so the thing that I come to is I understand why people get the vaccine, okay? 100% I understand. I understand 100% why people don't get the vaccine. But what I don't understand is the coercion. So if you take New York, for example, all right, well, you don't have to have an ID to vote. Okay, you don't have to have an ID to vote, but you're gonna have to have a vaccine passport before you can eat in a restaurant or go to a gym. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the regulation that's putting on a small business mm -hmm. owner. I just wanna do business. Well, now I've gotta be a police for the, uh, for the government, right? Mm -hmm. and, and if we're having that big of an issue, then why are we allowing so many people to come across the border? We're shipping them off in different ways. So we've got this cognitive dissonance that's taking place in our country right now. And I think a lot of people just don't know what to do, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of people that would say, I'm done with this. That man's going to drive me crazy. Y'all, we're going to have a I just got more. it. Did you? I yes. I think I did. Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't. There it goes. Okay. But, oh, no, um, it's coming around. We're going to take a commercial break. Yes. And we're going to kill a gnat while we're on commercial break. So we hope so. So y'all get the guns and come out here because we're going to shoot this thing. We'll be back in just a minute, y'all. <laughs> Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow whatever you do in life farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance needs call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and accept we treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome Blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. ATC knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns. As we add our input, 
make our choices and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact ETC. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. Roll over. Chance high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at the shelterpetproject.org. That was cute. Where'd y'all get that hot chick on that commercial? <laughs> I, uh, that was so cute. It was adopt a pet, and uh, one of those things. You know, we talk about we talk about so many people who have come to this area. It's a melting pot, and um, a lot of people who came here contribute to our local organizations, from adopt a pet to um, the um, thrift stores. The thrift stores could not run without all these local mm -hmm. volunteers. And if you walk in there and you hear the volunteers talking, they don't sound like us. They do no. not have southern accents. And they came here because they love this area, right. and and I'm sure a lot of them end up being your clients because they do. you're that local boy, and um, it's it's amazing to me what wonderful people get together and do for others. It is, and there's so many great people that are out there working, and one of the things that that I've realized in serving on nonprofits is it's one it's amazing how much it costs to run some of these nonprofits. Mm -hmm. I mean. Just even from the football booster club, for example, the amount of money that we raise and what we pay for that used to be paid for by the school systems. And, and you know, and, and you know, the question I want to ask is, are you going to take care of somebody on the other side of the county before you take care of your own children? Mm -hmm. No, but we, no. we send all kinds of money for whatever political motivation purposes and, and international kickbacks to Pakistan and other countries, and I'm for help. You know me. Mm -hmm. I'm for helping people. Mm -hmm. But we have a responsibility to take care of Definitely. our own people yep. first and yep. foremost yep. because it should be a fantastic thing to be a U.S. citizen. As a U.S. citizen, if you find yourself in trouble in another country, then the rule of law, you are innocent until proven guilty, should be there, and our government should be there to help our people. There was a time when, when the Roman citizens were feared, but what happened to the Roman Empire? Are we any different? Because the problem with, and the problem we have today is we think that because we have more, more access to information than any other generation in history that we're smarter. But the problem is human nature and our tendencies, the reason why we argue with our families, the reason why people end up divorced, none of that has changed. We haven't, you know, if you believe in evolution, evolved to that next level mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to where we, we overcome bitterness and anger and resentment and all those things. So, yes, we have more information, but we are more prideful than any other generation. And that's what happened to the Romans, for example. They, they became, you know, they went from, from, you know, building this empire to, oh, we're wealthy, nobody mm -hmm, can take mm -hmm, us down, mm -hmm. and pride mm -hmm. comes before the fall. Mm -hmm. And I think America's about as proud as they can be. You look at our Olympic athletes. I've never in my life. Oh my life gosh, seen, I have not watched one minute of that mess. You know, this is the no, first this is the so first sad. year. I've always cheered the Olympics, but this is the first year that with all the drama and oh, the I can't you know. It. Now I have watched a couple of the athletes that, that are just like, you know, America's a fantastic place and it's great to live here. But I don't understand, you know. I mean That's crazy. There's so many great things that have happened in our country, and yeah, those great things are, are being, we are allowing freedoms to be taken away from us bit mm -hmm. by bit mm -hmm. because of our own laziness. But, um, you know, we have a responsibility to, to take care of our citizens and each other and our family. You start with your immediate family and then you move out to extended family. Mm -hmm. And as a nation of citizens, we are a family. And where we got away from seeing that, you know, the powers that be want to divide us, black versus white versus brown versus yellow oh, yeah. versus whatever. Yeah. The average person doesn't see that way. Mm -mm. You know, if you get mad at somebody, if I get mad at somebody, it doesn't matter your skin color, it's mm -hmm. how you treated mm -hmm. me, right? Let, let me tell you something. The, um, last night, early, early wee hours of the morning, somebody shared something with me. 
and it was all untruths about something. And she was just laughing, and she said, because of my position in the community, I can't respond to this, although I would love to, because everything on there was a lie. You right. know? And there were like 12 different people who had reacted to this. And I wanted so to react, but because of my position, I'm not going to react. You have to be careful. Although I want to slap some people, because you're like, that's a lie. Why are you spreading that lie? Why are you doing that? And, and you just have to suck it up, buttercup, and go on, you know, because people believe the media and the internet and everything else that connects us worldwide has also created disasters right. of, of lies being told and then retold and retold and retold. So right. it's, it's, a, it's a little scary because right. you can, oh, but it said so on there and, and you believe it. I know. And, and it's it, not the truth. And it takes so much effort nowadays. Like one of the things, I mean, we have to do a lot of research for what we do. But quite frankly... I can't even imagine. If I were you, I mean, I think about me in the trucking business. The right. greatest day of my life was the day I said, I'm out of here, goodbye, so long, adios. Right. Gone. You know, the only... I don't know how you do what you do with the government down your back the way they are. It has to be... <laughs> like having some a snake crawling down your shoulder you would every not, day. You would not believe. I can't believe. even imagine. But I'll, I'll, here's the thing that I'll tell you. So there was a time in our country when you were re were rewarded for hard work and diligence. And and in my life, quite frankly, I've never been the best athlete. But although I, he's a pretty awesome, amazing, world class skier. Okay. Yeah, but but on that level, when you get to that level, those guys were unbelievable athletes. So I was a good enough athlete to get there. But man, I mean, there were there were people that just like I'd look at them and I'd be in awe, and then I'd go beat them. Like I'd look <laughs> at them and it. I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like, Lord, you know, I'm struggling with envy. I wish I was as, as athletic as that person. And then I go you beat them, right? I love it. But you know how? I was there at seven o'clock in the morning on Monday training. They took their athletic ability for granted. And I didn't take my athletic ability for granted. So I outworked them. Mm -hmm. And then I out mentally trained them. And that's where I catapulted to the next level. I was a good enough athlete to get there, but it was what I learned mentally to overcome and the consistency that came with that. Mm -hmm. So I just had to work so hard. And there was a time, especially when I first got in the investment business, you could do unbelievable amounts of research and that research mattered. None of that matters anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, mm -hmm. like all of the, the peers that I talked to, the, the Federal Reserve and the government has stepped in to the point that they want to remove risk and, and they've so abandoned the foundations of the past because we've become a country now that just wants everything to look good on that plastic mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. and nobody cares about the foundation of the home. Mm -hmm. and. What we're doing is the same policy decisions that led to the Great Depression, the same policy decisions that led to the currency collapses of Venezuela, the same policy decisions that led to the great inflation of the Weimar Republic in Germany are being undertaken by our government and cheered by our people um, because because nobody understands history enough to really know what's coming. Have you literally been to the grocery store lately? Because everything you said has come to pass. I know, and it's going to get and worse. And you told me, and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope he's not right. I hope he's not right. I knowing, hoped I wasn't. Knowing right you too. were right. Well, I, I hoped right. I wasn't, but yeah. I don't see, I don't see any other outcome for this now. And the farmers aren't getting rich. No, they're not. The dairy dairy owners are not getting rich. Who's getting rich on this stuff? So here's the problem. You've got individuals at the top of our country, like the Gates Foundation, which is supposedly now the largest farmland owner in the country. Which blows my mind. All right. So. And I'm paying six ninety eight for a chuck roast a pound. Can you believe that? It used to be eighty nine cents. What is that inflation rate? But it's well, I don't know. I don't have a calculator in front From of me. From eighty nine cents it's, to six ninety eight. Well, and we have asset price inflation in the markets. We have asset price inflation in housing, and uh, you know the problem is so now. So now the, the potential next level is, sorry, I had somebody text me, I was like, I looked at it and I'm like, are you fussing about what I'm saying on TV? Um, I shouldn't have looked at that. This new watch makes me look. But anyway, uh, I want one of those. The, the problem, they're, fa they're, they're great actually. Oh, this one's not the Apple, this is the uh, Garmin and I love the Garmin. Uh, so the problem is now you've got, we have shortages in the labor force. Mm -hmm. 
we have shortages, so that leads to but shortage. created really not by a shortage in the labor force, created by. It's artificially created yes, because the yes. government wants to bail everybody yes. out, yep. right? Yep. So you, you paid people to stay at home, you gave them all kinds of money, right? Uh, they had access to the internet and they're gonna spend, right? I mean, they're, they're gonna spend. Yeah. Amazon. So mm -hmm. then you try to peel that back out of the system and people just don't, I mean, there are people who aren't going to work unless they have to. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm the type of person that I have to work regardless of whether I'm paid or not because I, I want to make the world a better place. I'm not going to be able to, mm -hmm. but I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. And if everybody tried to do that, well, I, I I'm going to try. Will. I think you will. You'll, you'll, you will create an impact on somebody that you come across. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. I hope yeah. so. I, I, I hope that, you know. I hope it may I, not be one of your own children, but it'll be somebody who looks up and says, Paul Kiker told me so-and-so, and it worked. Right. You know, and that's... Well, and I hope I hope that I hope that I leave a lasting impact for my kids too, right? So that you pour out if 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 we're before the Lord. They learn by seeing it as example, but some stranger is going to go, wow, I've never heard that before. <laughs> well, here's my humanity. Never heard that before. <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I always feel guilty when I do. I, I get on my knees and I ask the Lord for guidance and hope that He pours wisdom in, and that and and I pour my life out to others. But if you you know cut me off or go slow in the fast lane. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have to apologize to the Lord for the next 45 minutes after what I say. But anyway, uh, I don't know why I'd go slow in the fast lane. That just that drives, just drives me absolutely <laughs> berserk. My wife, I'm like, I'm like, they're just being selfish. And the other day I was driving in the fast lane and I was just kind of lost in thought. And I looked up in the rearview mirror and somebody was flashing their lights at me. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, got you got over. <laughs> but, um, you know, the problem is we've got, we've got lack of labor to generate the manufacturing process. We've got bottlenecks in international shipping right now. Like the container prices coming out of China and shipping are horrible. So from the 1990s, we had globalization, okay? I mean, it's, this is all about globalization, but we were able to hide inflation in the, in the foolish monetary decisions of the Bushes and the Clintons and the Bushes, all these dynasties that we have in there. So cheap labor international expensive labor in the U.S. So you transition that out. Well, all of a sudden, those international costs are going up and we're more on an equal playing field. So one of the greatest opportunities that we're going to have over the next 20 years is manufacturing in the United States is going to become profitable again. But the problem is we're going to have to make up for all of that transferred inflation probably over the next 20 years. So inflation is going to be pretty bad. And the risk that we run is a currency collapse because what country in the rest of the world is gonna sit there and watch the U.S. be this irresponsible uh, financially and continue to loan us money? I mean, the infrastructure and technology around the world is developed to the point that they can cut us out of the picture at some point. We're not there yet, okay? But I can guarantee you, if you look at what the, the other major countries are doing, is they are strategically planning to continue to have their economy support themselves without the U.S., mm -hmm. okay? So we have reached that point to where we have become the most selfish, arrogant, self-centered person in the room that now nobody wants to do business with us. Mm -hmm. So instead of being, instead of being that We're kind of like that spoiled, rotten little blonde that nobody likes. Yeah. Because they just... <laughs> the mean girl. Yeah, the mean girl. We're, yeah. We've become yeah. the mean girls of yeah. the world. Yeah, and that's so, and, and, and what happens? I mean, you've got to look at nations as groups of individuals, okay? So what happens, and this is what I tell my kids, what happens on a high school level is just a smaller version of what happens on a national level, right? So the same dynamics are there because it's larger populations of humans, and then you've got powerful people that have their own uh, uh, power struggles that are in there. So. My concern is, is that inflation, yes, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. I still believe that we're going to have a 30 to 40 percent market decline before we hit the major inflation. I don't know when that's going to be. There's no way of knowing when that's going to be. The only thing that you can do is if you have tools that you're willing to be wrong in the short run, that they will warn you in the past to try to protect your capital a little bit and you can be adaptive. But the problem is, the, the government has shown us we will do whatever it takes to push stocks higher. Mm -hmm. And I believe in our, in, within the next five years, we will see the government step up and start buying stocks, start buying corporate bonds, 
to try to bail out and keep this inflationary thing going. And the problem with that is, doesn't matter how much hard work you put into it, you're not rewarded for it, mm -hmm. right? Yes, you will be to an extent, but you're not rewarded like you should be, okay? Because what should happen is if you make better and more disciplined decisions than the person next to you, then you should be rewarded for those decisions, mm -hmm. right? We should all have a level starting field, right? So I, do, I, don't, I don't know how to deal with the outcome, but I believe everybody that wants a college education should get it. But at the same time, I can look at college right now and half the degrees out there don't matter. No. Come, come be in a, work for an, as an apprentice for yeah, me. Or a plumber, an electrician, or a yeah. carpenter. Why, why pay all these fees yeah. to the government? Because guess what now? You speak out about the government, and we've seen this happen in the medical profession. People speak against what's coming out of the government, and all of a sudden they lose their licenses. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. well that's, all, that's what it's all about. It's the control at the top to be able to knock you out without due process. If your toilet stops up, who's the first person you're going to call? Uh, I, my plumber. toilet stops up, I'm going to call a plumber. Are you going to ask him, does he have a degree in anything? No. No, you don't care. You want to know, can he do the job and how fast can he get there? I'm going to call Jeremy yeah. and I'm going to say, I know this is a small <laughs> job, but can you get to my house because yeah, my yeah, wife's yeah, going to yeah. kill me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking about something that happened several years ago, and I was there that night. And I don't remember if you sponsored this or not when General Honore came to town. Do you remember, remember that? He came I don't to remember half of what He came I to Appalachian Tech and he spoke. And it was during that time that everybody was into this, oh, we better buy food and we better hide rations and we better do this. No, I wasn't there, there was a time in America that people were scared that they wouldn't have enough water, enough food, and enough of that. And now I call us the go it, blow it generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we're just going in and blowing. And my granny'd say it all the time, you get paid, you better not go it and blow it. You better say, put you some back, put you some back. I'm learning to put it back right? because I'm scared because I've lived that go it and blow it generation, been there, done that. Right. And then you're, <gasps> but I can remember when, I can't remember who brought General Honore in, but he was at Appalachian Tech and um, he was speaking about stuff and he's, he's not on my political side of the world, but anyway, he was there and I was there and I thought, I've never been so afraid that I would buy rations and food and things like that. And I guess we got over that because now, Nobody's caring. Everybody's just—it's weird. Yeah, and well, I mean, you've had there's there's we have just-in-time inventory. We have basically anything that we want at our fingertips. We've except all, toilet paper when COVID. Except came. toilet paper, <laughs> but that is a warning shot across the bow that you shouldn't hoard, but you should be prudent. So this is the way I look at. It. So what do you do to protect yourself against high inflation? Now guys, there's, there's no guarantee that we're going to have substantial inflation. I, I can't see another mathematical, I, I can't see, the mathematics just don't make sense any other way. We just don't know when it's going to really take off and when it's going to get out of control. But it's basically like what I experienced when I was in Idaho and Montana uh, last week on our annual fly fishing trip. You've got the worst drought you've had in 100 years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much to set a forest on fire and it's hard to put it under. So we have, in the monetary world, the best way I can explain it, the government's printed so much money, there's all kind of tender. And all we have to do is just have the right level of humidity and once inflation takes off, it's gonna rage. And the thing that's terrifying to me about inflation, because I tell people, in managing money for retirees, you can be conservative and survive inflation. If you are conservative and prudent, but you're not shrewd, okay inflation will wipe you out inflation will wipe you out because that 30-year bond you have that's paying three percent what good does it do if you're stuck with it for 30 years and inflation's running seven or eight percent okay we saw a little bit of that in the 1970s and the 1980s well the same types of you know supply chain disruptions i mean what happens what are people going to do if you move into a house and you need a washer and dryer and they're only making half of what needs mm -hmm. to be made. Mm -hmm. Well, some people are just going to start paying whatever they need to pay to get it. Mm -hmm. And that's We've how inflation with starts. stoves, refrigerators, you name it, anything. Yeah. yeah anything. So one of the things I encourage people, if you're on a tight budget, one of the things that you can do, and this is not end of the world planning, okay? It's not end of the world planning. But take what it is you eat and use on a regular basis that can be stored up for a period of time. You know, toilet paper. How much toilet paper do you use? 
well, maybe have three months worth of toilet paper. I mean, for some people, that's going to be nine more rolls, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you don't just continue to stockpile, but you buy, take from your shelf, and then you go buy. So if we have a bout where inflation's running seven, eight, nine percent for a period of time because of disruptions during COVID or more government lockdowns, which we may mm -hmm. see coming, mm -hmm. and then it settles down, you, you, you use up that savings just a little bit. So what it ends up being is your savings. So if you can do that with the things that you use on a regular basis and they won't go bad, you don't need to be wasteful. Whether it be garbage bags or cleaning yeah. products or things that you know you're going to use. It's prudent. So what you do is you buy one or two more items extra while you're at the store mm -hmm. now so it fits within your budget but that's a future savings mm -hmm. and you know and, and who knows what's going to happen in the future cryptocurrencies are something that has been made clear that we are not supposed to talk about very much um, no recommendations at all but I, but I don't believe that Bitcoin is where the future is quite mm -hmm. frankly mm -hmm. one of the other currencies is one uh, cryptocurrencies is the one that I've come to the conclusion can survive whatever's coming in the future but uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of having gold as inflation insurance. That's financial insurance. So most of us have uh, fire insurance on our home. Do you have fire insurance mm -hmm. on your home? Absolutely. Well, in 10 years, you might spend $15,000 mm -hmm. to protect your home. Mm -hmm. Do you sit around and go, my gosh, I should not have bought that insurance? No, I'm like, do we need more insurance? Exactly. Yes. Okay, do so we the need point more is. Insurance? You know, because replacement value is always more, and so because it costs more for everything you buy, so yeah. Yes. Up, do you have enough? Yes. Yeah. So I have to yeah. be a little limited on what I say on on live TV because you got to talk to a financial advisor. But there's a certain percentage that I've calculated is appropriate for you to have in some precious metals. Is that going to be the answer in the future? <sighs> no, I don't know. But throughout history, the thing about gold and silver is if our government inflates, you know, if we have this massive inflation, then gold tends to be a pretty good hedge. Mm -hmm. Real estate's been a good hedge in the past, but what do you have to worry about now? You've got the CDC who came out and says you can't evict people. Okay? Well, now they're changing that. Well, they're fighting it, but, yeah. the, but this administration made the comment. We understand this is probably unconstitutional, but we can tie it up in the courts long enough to try so to, to, to help some people out. So that, that's, not, that's not the spirit of the law. That's, mm -hmm. that's coercion, that's manipulation, that's... Look, there are some people think it's okay to work the system, but think about the people that you're hurting there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people, you know people who own real estate who are levered to the hilt, mm -hmm. and if they don't get those payments, they're right. gonna lose it. Right. So they, they bought rental income for income, not for expense. They bought it for income. And they have to make their payment based on that income coming in. Right. So the government has basically stepped into the economy and says, we're going to take from you to help you. They're choosing winners and losers in this environment. And if you're a major corporation, you got it made. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody who is either working the system or there are a lot of people who are, you know, I, I have major issues on the lack of ability for people to climb classes in our country. That's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. So I, I see the issues that are there. But a lot of these policies are keeping people there. And uh, so it's the middle class that's getting just eviscerated. Eating alive. Yeah. Eating alive. Well, guess what got eaten alive? Our time. An hour. I noticed that a minute ago. It <laughs> feels hour. like we've been sitting here 10 minutes. I'm sorry I talked so hour. much today, y'all. An hour. No, I'm so glad you did. And, and I hope that people will be wise. I said I'm not paying six ninety eight for chuck roast, and I waited till it went on sale for four ninety eight, and I did buy four of them frozen. But darn it, this inflation. I know. Be wise. Pick up the phone. Call Paul Kiker, 706-253-7285. 7285. Put your money where your mouth is and give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Be glad to help you. See y'all soon. Bye, y'all. <laughs> you got me looking on the ground.